The brain cells, neurons, are basically electrical computers. And what we want to do is to turn on or off these different brain cells to see what kinds of behaviors or pathologies they trigger or that they're involved with. So what we do is we take light-sensitive molecules from the natural world, install them in the neurons, and now shining light on the neurons will allow us to turn those cells on or off. So now we can figure out what kinds of downstream effects they can trigger. Behavior changes, sensations, maybe even therapeutic outcomes. If you think about the brain as a computer, which is always a dangerous metaphor, it's like we have a really great keyboard for entering information in, but we don't yet have the monitor. We can't yet watch what's going on inside the computer very well. So right now, we're working very hard on technologies for mapping the circuits of the brain and reading information out of the brain. And once we have those tools, which hopefully will mature in the coming years, we'll have all the technology we need to really understand how the brain works. We can map the wiring, we can see what's going on, and then with our optogenetic tools, which of course we did first, we can then perturb the brain circuitry and really delve deeply in a causal way into what's happening. In neurotechnology, ethics is really an important topic and at the very core in some ways because we're talking about the brain, which is our identity and who we are in many ways. So um, on one level, we always want to make sure that any experiment that's done, even on animals as well as on humans, is approved by members of the community. It has to be justified in terms of the risk and, and reward. Um, it's also very important, I think, to have open discussions about brain technology. You know, I think that the brain is so close to home, it's hard to get people to talk about it sometimes. I was on a panel once where the chair asked the audience if how many people had used uh, cognitive enhancing drugs, and nobody raised their hand. And so I think there's a bit of a, of a discomfort that people have talking about their brains generating their minds. It almost feels a little bit tricky to discuss such things. So I think we have an obligation, first of all, to make this an open, above-board, discussable topic and make sure that we're engaging all of humanity in discussing these things. And then, of course, as individuals, uh, we have the responsibility that if we do um, uh, see something that we don't think is correct, that we take a, a stance and speak out. Um, uh, but I do think there is hope that's emerged from other areas of biotechnology. So for example, an often cited example is at the dawn of the, uh, the genomic age, where people were cutting and pasting DNA together. And in 1974, a bunch of people got together and decided, here are things that we want to do, here are things that need approval, and here are things that have to be discussed. And you could argue that in the decades since, you know, we've had huge advances driven by biotechnology, you know, growth hormone and insulin and all sorts of vaccines and all sorts of new antibiotics and ways of helping people. Um, and it's been a real boon for humanity. So my hope is that in neurotechnology, we can recapitulate that and make that something that is part of our discussion of how we want to go forward as a, as a civilization.